the find and call on companies ready to buy uh, webinar. This is actually an old one that has been revived for us. Um, I've updated it with a lot of new material, including how do we go ahead and use uh, tools such as LinkedIn, Sales Navigator, if you are a premium subscriber, but if you're not, I'm gonna show you how you can do this same type of stuff with both the free versions as well as the premium versions, depending on where your business is all the way through. Um, so KO Advantage Group is the fastest growing sales training program available. Uh, we teach specifically entrepreneurs that are in B2B high value services. So think of this like engineers, project managers, marketing agencies, um, even HR consulting firms. At the end of the day, if you are trying to sell something that someone can't touch and feel, we show you how to be able to create a lot of value with that. We also do work with teams of people. So typically this will be either sales teams or it might be companies that maybe don't have a dedicated sales team, but they are client facing. So surprisingly, we actually work with a lot of engineering firms and we are able to teach them how to sell, how to create a lot of value all the way through. We have students right across Canada and the U.S. because we do a lot of this. We're an online classroom. We'd be able to, we're able to have these conversations and we're focused on teaching all this. And the other thing is, and you're going to get a real big insight into this, is that we don't teach anything unless we do it ourselves. We go out and we do those types of things and then we have, we're able to say, okay, this worked. How can you go ahead and apply this? Take what works for you, what doesn't. And before I started KO Advantage Group, I actually worked for several years in corporate sales. So I'm one of those people, there's an old saying that says, those that can do and those that can't teach, I promise you, I have been able to do both. Um, I was sales rep of the year when I worked for Xerox as my very first uh, sales organization. I worked for, in medical sales for a year. Um, I was a top rep at American Express and as well as Pure Letter. What you'll notice if you recognize some of those logos, they all have one thing in common. They are considered number one to be commodities, right? You know, I mean, at the end of the day, you can go anywhere else to get your credit card. You can go to any other company to get a photocopier. You can go to any other company to ship your packages from coast to coast. Yet all of these companies are considered to be the premium in sales, the premium in terms of price. You don't go to American Express because they are the cheapest. You don't go to Xerox because they are the cheapest. And so the, the consistency that I learned from all of those different companies, I'm here to show you. I wish upon you. If you haven't set your 2020 resolution yet, my wish for you is to number one, be the premium price, right? At the end of the day, someone always has to be the top price. I hope that you are the top price. And number two, I hope that with BI being the top price, you are still able to close deals faster than ever before. That is my goal behind you. And there's, uh, for those of you that are old enough to remember the movie, Jerry Maguire, Jerry Maguire had this saying, he's like, fewer clients and more personal attention. I want to make sure that I'm able to create more. And by creating more, he was then able to create more value with this. That is my wish upon for all of you. This is me today. Um, I am the one on the left, in case you're a little bit confused. Who's that? Is that, which one is Kim? No, no, that is me. Um, that is, uh, I want to call her my friend, probably in my thoughts. She's more of my friend than, than she is of mine. But that is my friend, Oprah. I am LinkedIn's most uh, inspirational sales leader to follow. Um, I'm Success Magazine's most inspirational blogger. I am a three-time author, including my newest book, Sell More Faster. Um, it is available wherever you buy books. And if you are not available to buy the book um, I, or for whatever reason, you're just like, I prefer e-versions. I'm going to give you guys the link to be able to download the whole version for free here. So more faster book at bitly.com. You can just go there, you fill out a form and you can get the whole version for free. Um, but I do prefer if you are a hand copy person, go ahead and buy it on Amazon or go to your local, my recommendation, go to your local book retailer um, and be able to order it from them, right? So help serve small businesses just like ourselves. I don't think um, uh, Bezos is really struggling for money, whereas your local small book retailers are, and they would be happy to place a special order for those books. I am also Startup Canada's Female Entrepreneur of the Year. Okay, so let's do a quick quiz because I want to see who is going to be paying attention throughout this entire thing. 
what percentage of decision makers, DM stands for decision makers, what percentage of decision makers have taken a meeting based on a cold call, have attended an event or gone to, uh, taken a meeting based entirely on a cold call? I am also wrapping in cold emails as part of cold calls, but the idea behind this is that you have never had a conversation with this person before. What percentage do you guys think? In the chat, I want you to open up there and say either A, B, C, or D. Is it A, 13%? B, 36%, C, 57%, or D, 78%. I want to hear from you guys and tell me what do you think that the number of people that have been able to take a, uh, either a cold meeting or have attended an event entirely from somebody they've never heard from before. So we have a lot of things. Oh, now everything's starting to come in all the way through here. So we have a lot of people saying A, 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 a few Bs, a few Cs, um, an A, A, 13%, A, 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 B, 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 B. Oh my goodness, you guys, I want to tell you that you're all wrong. You're all wrong. Oh my goodness, you guys, the actual answer is, if anyone wants to throw it in there real quick, the actual answer is 78%. 78% of decision makers have at some point in time taken a meeting or have accepted an inv invite from somebody, entirely from somebody they didn't know. This is entirely based on compelling conversation, right? Now, I don't want you to think that every single time somebody approaches them, they're going to accept this, right? Or that 78% of all requests they're going to accept. That is not what the question is here. The question is, has they, have you ever accepted a request from somebody that you have, you've never had an interaction with before? So 78%, eight out of 10 people, you guys, right? This should be mind boggling for you, all right? Number one, that means because if you have a chance, if you create a compelling enough event, right? If, even if you know, have no interaction with this person before, you have the opportunity to say yes. Now, I have had this both in my corporate sales experience as well as in my entrepreneurial experience. I have done that as um, for both, you know, selling people on our programs as well as, we're gonna talk about this in a second here, bigger sponsorship as well, depending on what you're trying to do. But at the end of the day, a sale is a sale. Now, I read a, um, a tweet actually not too long ago from Mark Cuban. So Mark Cuban, um, Dallas Mavericks owner, right? Like massive millionaire and everything. He recently posted out his phone number online and he says, go ahead and text me, go and text me. And he, he immediately said within like 24 hours of texting, he actually did accept a meeting from somebody who texted him because he had a compelling enough offer. So first of all, I want you to think about this. Like if you were able to create more compelling conversations, you were able to maybe find the people that wanted to buy, you were able to have these conversations, how would this change your business? And number two, knowing that whatever the value is of your service or product, how much money are you potentially leaving on the table by not going forward on this? by not approaching people that could ultimately want to get to buy. Now, I, I wanna be very clear here, you guys. When we talk about people that are going to, like wanting to buy, I promise you, you are not gonna go on their website and find a flashing banner that says, I am looking for your product or service. I, am, I have money and I want to invest it on whatever comes along. I mean, that happens so rarely, right? And I think if people kind of do that, that's more clickbaity than it is actual, right? I have yet to ever see that happen. I've seen a lot of people put out clickbait, like, hey, I, want, I have $10,000 to invest, Tell, pitch me your product. Okay, seriously. But on the flip side, right? If you can create something really compelling for somebody, then we're able to get there. So the first thing to know here is that if you sell to everyone, you're ultimately selling to no one. So over the weekend, I posted something on LinkedIn and I said, you know, give me your elevator pitch. Tell me what it is that you, you want to do. And I was amazed by the number of people that kind of came back and started to use like these really vague statements. They were like, well, I work with scientists, right? This one woman says, she goes, even scientists, I feel like it's too narrow. And I'm like, you need to be even more narrow than that. Because when we have a conversation with one person, when I'm speaking to you, Bill, when I'm speaking to you, Dirk Blaine, right? I'm watching to like, you know, Shannon, Deborah, Daniel, Julian, um, Lynn, when I'm speaking to each one of you, right? You know that I'm talking to you. 
When I say, hey, if you are a business owner, I can help you sell, you're like, yeah, okay, right? So we actually do wanna get really narrow in this. So there's a few things that we're gonna be able to filter when we're looking through our own conversation. So at this point, you guys, I am gonna flip between presentation and actual websites. Um, so, so just bear with me, there's gonna be a little bit of a delay. So if you put something in the chat, just give it a second for it to come through, but we're gonna go through this, okay? So what can you filter, right? Number one, you guys, I am a massive believer of LinkedIn. How many people saw this webinar or uh, knew about this webinar either through my e email newsletter or through a post on LinkedIn or one of my other social medias? I just want to hear from you guys really quickly. But some of the things that you can filter through here are things like location, right? Proximity is key. Okay, proximity is key. People think that they are going to sell, set up some type of online business and that all of their clients are going to be based on geographies all the way through. Oh, a bunch of you from LinkedIn, newsletter, newsletter this morning, newsletter, newsletter, um, Facebook, thank you so much, right? I mean, but you guys, like this is so key, okay. So we're gonna be able to filter through some of these messages through LinkedIn. Um, we're gonna be able to talk to them about occupational role. Now you can also do this in Facebook as well. I'm actually gonna show you, um, you guys are gonna get behind the scenes on all my social media today. <laughs> um, I'm gonna show you how you can actually filter through locations um, through, through um, social media as well. Okay, education. Um, you can filter by size of the organization. Now I, <sighs> Most social medias don't allow you to filter by age unless you're putting out ad spend. I don't want to talk about ad spend today. We save that for actually a marketing conversation with maybe a marketing team. I'm going to talk to you about how do you connect with people one on one. When I say age here and even gender, um, these are going to be more of like what can you physically see? Okay, so let's be clear, right? You know, you're going to be able to see that someone is going to be younger or is going to be much more mature, right? You're going to be able to see that some Somebody is going to be, you know, uh, more likely, you know, uh, in one direction versus another. So let's go and check some of this out here, you guys. Oops, we're just gonna flip out of this. So on LinkedIn, and actually, I'm gonna open up another tab here for Facebook. Um, we'll do Facebook first because Facebook's actually kind of the easiest one to be able to be able to show you how you can actually filter people through geography. So they used to have it where um, when you would actually go, you could actually create a group of people uh, just on the side here um, that would actually have people that were associated with certain things. And then they got rid of that. But now what you can actually do is you can actually go through search through friends of friends. It's just taking a second here in like Calgary or Winnipeg or Toronto or Boston or anything else like this. And so what this is really going to give you is a nice listing, um, friend of a friend in, let's say Boston. And now I can actually search for people that have a one or a second level connection. And so what I can actually do is I can say, hey, you know, we actually have, I can actually see, you know, who they're friends with, right? Um, you know, all the way through there by actually going through that. But what we would actually be able to do is we can actually look for friends of friends inside any one of these and actually start like inviting them. Perhaps you're having a networking event. Perhaps you're wanting just to connect with people or be able to actually show, um, you know, what, what your program is. But this is actually gonna be able to actually create more of a conversation for you. Now, I am a big believer in LinkedIn. For most of you guys, you guys are gonna be selling much more of um, sales, like uh, sales or business solutions as opposed to Facebook. So that's why I don't focus on Facebook too much. I rarely use it uh, for, for product searching. So we're not gonna do Facebook too much, but I am gonna show you how you can actually do this through an online method, okay? So the first thing is, is that you guys can actually go ahead and, um, and search for, for number one for different types of people. And I hope you're already doing this. Feel free to connect with people, right? And you can connect them through different geographies. So let's say I'm looking for more people. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna look for more people in Vancouver. Um, I also gonna look for people that are second level connections. Because if you, somebody is likely to uh, add you, if they are a second level connection, as, as opposed, opposed to, I mean, first level connections, you're already connected with them. And I highly recommend you start to have those conversations with them all the way through. 
Second level connections, those are people that you're not connected with and you have an opportunity to go through them. Now there are other filters that we can put through here, right? We can actually, we can look at some of the other things such as perhaps they went to a different school. Perhaps we wanna connect with people of a specific person, right? So that we have an opportunity to talk to them, right? Listen, I know you follow James, right? What do you think of some of his postings, right? What are your thoughts on this, right? What are, you know, what are some of the other things? Perhaps you wanna have them in a specific industry. I look for things more in software development. So we're gonna look for anybody who's like currently in software. Um, and then perhaps they, they have some other types of interests as well, right? You can add it, maybe they're in, um, if they're in software, perhaps I want them in more business consulting or just consulting in general. And we're gonna see what that actually allows us to do. And we're gonna apply that. All right. So now we have some pretty cool people, right? We got like Brianna, we got Yad here, we got Jenna, right? I have a couple people in here. I've been really narrow on my search, you guys, and I want to be very specific on this. We are, our goal is not to try to find thousands of people. Our goal is to try to have conversations with them on a deeper level. So this is how you're going to like, so when you're just going ahead and you're just finding people all the way through here. So let's pull up Brianna's, um, conversation here. We're going to pull up her profile and we're going to connect with her, right? I want to, chances are she's not going to have something out here saying I am ready to buy all the way through here, right? She's likely going to be someone who's going to be like, this is some of the things that I'm looking for. And we're going to have to dig in a little bit deeper and start to put ourselves in Brianna's shoes. Let's think about what Brianna would be very much interested in. So she's, in, she's interested in employer branding, right? She's the founder of her own company. She's a top 30 under 30. So chances are the things that I can already tell you about her is she's a very motivated person, right? She's somebody that is inter instantly interested in trying to, to be seen at a higher level, right? Some of the other things I can see about her in her About Us page, is that she's looking for better incomes, right? Um, she's, you know, over the past seven years, she's worked in recruitment and helped companies and everything. She's looking for new things, right? And she's like curious, like, please go ahead and connect with me, right? She's, she's very interested in community and everything else like this. Um, she has some followers as well, not a huge amount of followers, right? But we can also see maybe some of the articles that she's, she's commented on, right? Go in there, take, take a look at some of the things that she has, she has looked at. What are some of the things that she's already showing that you should, she's interested in. All right. So now we see that she, she has uh, predictive hiring and retention for hourly workers. She's trying to help her customers hire better hourly employees and retain them longer through artificial intelligence. Chances are she's using, she's using some type of software. I mean, we could actually go take a look at her website and everything all the way through if we really wanted to, right? But she's looking for prospective customers, strategic advisors, and future investors who are really ready to take the suck out of hiring. And she even gives us her email address all the way through here, right? Like, I mean, for those of you that are stuck on how do I find the email addresses of people, like you just need to dig in a little bit deeper. Now, if she didn't have it listed there, one of the things that you could take a look at is by going through this more page. Um, oh, sorry, it's not in here because we're not actually connected to her. Oh, sorry, contact info. They've moved in. So contact info will actually give us a little bit of information. So she has a couple websites. She has a Twitter. She has listed her birthday, which I, I always like because it gives you an opportunity to reach out to somebody when it is their birthday and just say, hey, what's going on? But her, her phone number and her email address isn't listed on here. So what we're going to do, you guys are actually going to see me go ahead and connect with her right now. So I'm going to add a note. Now, I'm not a huge person that believes in always adding a note whenever you connect with people, but I do believe that it is impactful uh, when you're wanting to specifically get in front of somebody in a very unique way. So in this case, I'm going to say, hi, Brianna. And I'm a big believer, not in telling them what I can do, but either showing us a piece of interest in what I found interesting on her profile, what is something that we can talk about, or how I can help her. Now, the big thing is if you saw my LinkedIn posting this weekend, it talked about the, the value of creating a question as an elevator pitch. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in today's presentation. Um, but it, by forming it in the form of a question, I am creating engagement all the way through. So... So what I'm going to say is I saw on your profile, you were looking for investors 
for your company. Now, I'm not telling her that I am an investor. I don't want to be deceptive in this way, but I am wanting to show the biggest thing that people will automatically be attracted to is how can you bring me money? How can you help me grow my business? How can you go ahead and help me be able to deliver this all the way through? That's it. What types of investors are you looking for is really what I want to do. Now I do have Grammarly in here, right? And it'll actually test my, um, my, my tonality as well through here, right? So it's telling me, oh, it's, uh, now it's saying, okay, you're, you're actually optimistic. Right? So I'm like, okay, awesome. Um, there's actually a lot of science and scientific research on actually adding a little bit more all the way through here. So we're going to add her. We're going to connect with her. Um, it'll be interesting to see if she connects and even replies while we're on this webinar as well, all the way through. But that's kind of the quickest way of starting to be able to connect with people. Like I'll ask them what they're looking for. Ask them how, how you can help them. Ask them all the way through. Now, if we're going through on Sales Navigator with um with just in the chat, how many people use Sales Navigator or one of the premium services of LinkedIn? Um, just let me know all the way through. I don't want to spend a ton of time on the premium services if there's not a lot of people that are currently using it or currently interested in gaining it all the way through. Um, so so yeah, so Tally does use it um, as well. She uses the premium version. So I'm going to show you how much um, how much different the premium version is. Now you can continue to use LinkedIn for a lot of the the free versions all the way through. Um, not not at all. Okay, or not planning to. Okay. No premium versions. Okay. Okay. You guys. So thank you. Um, continue to tell me all the way through. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to spend a lot of time on the premium version. Um, if, if it isn't something that you are interested in, but I do find a lot of value in it. It is really expensive. So you need to make sure that you can justify the service all the way through. So in the same way that, um, that you can actually filter through people all the way through, you can actually take it a little bit, um, a step further as well with some of the premium versions as well. So if you are, an employee of a company, talk to your company about potentially getting you um, the premium version all the way through. But you can actually create um, different types of lists. And we're going to talk about, um, yeah, using the, the premium version. Um, okay. So let's take a look at that. Okay. So I do have the premium version. I use sales navigator because it allows me to reach out to, to even more connections, um, on, on a faster place. So one of the reasons why I'm a big fan of sales navigator is because one of the things I do recommend to you is to create a list of 100 ideal clients that you're going to want to get to. And we're going to get to that. Uh, we're going to go back to the presentation here in a second, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And then, um, because what you're going to do is you're going to be able to follow people all the way through. So in this case, I have Chris Hobbs and his company is on, he's on one of my lists. And so whenever I see that he has posted something, I can go ahead and, you know, actually view his, his profile and be able to comment on that so that I'm constantly in his shadow all the time. Oh my goodness, Chris, like that's really exciting. I've already sent him a message, a, um, a sales navigator message, and I can take, show you guys a little bit of what that possibly looks like, but we're, I, it's more than just liking posts. You guys, this is about actually commenting all the way through. Because people get much more notified when they see comments or they, they will typically, if they're very good at social, they will know that they have to respond back to you. The idea behind this is how can you get your name known on a regular basis? Okay. And we'll just post that. Let's go back to sales navigator here. The other thing about this is we can actually do some, some advanced searches all the way through. So we can actually search for leads. We can search for accounts, mentions in the news, or even people that have recently job changed. Okay. I want you guys to understand how important this recent job change one is. When I was working for American Express, I would follow a couple of specific companies. Some of my big companies, one of the companies I followed on was NMAX. Um, and Max is an energy company uh, locally here. And I would follow on people that would re be recently appointed to specific 
specific roles. And when you see that somebody has been appointed towards a decision making role, this is a great opportunity to reach out to them. Don't think I should, oh, this is fantastic. I should like make a note so that I can follow up with them. Once they get their feet wet, like I'm going to reach out to them. Mm, wrong, you guys. Number one, you're never going to run into a decision maker who has a, um, a more quiet inbox than the moment that they have started a brand new role, right? This is your opportunity to like actually get within response. The other thing is most senior executives know that they have about a two to three year window within their role to be able to create a legacy project. The goal behind this is that within that first little while, and they are, they're typically having to uh, report to a board of directors or even a, a much more senior level executive on um, what is your 90 day plan. So this can be a really good opportunity to reach out to somebody and say, how, like, you know, what is going to be part of your 90 day plan? What is part of the, the legacy project that you want to leave behind? A question as simple as that can actually be really impactful, right? Because it creates that genuine interest and curiosity all the way through. Uh, mentions in the news can be a great opportunity to comment or even tag that person again, letting them know that you, you have seen them, that they're on your list. Um, and then you can also search for accounts or search for leads. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna actually search for leads. So because I've already done the search before, it all will automatically generate or pre-populate people that I've already looking for within certain regions. Um, in this case, um, I've allowed somebody else to kind of take over some of my sales navigator. So it's a little bit, um, well, it, it's quite failed right now. Um, you know, I would actually recommend that you would only choose like no more than three geographies that you would really want to tick. Because your goal is to look for that ideal list of 100, you want to be as narrow as possible. You also typically, if you are going to look for geographies or outside of your typical city, you want to be, it has to be a city that you're planning on being there within the next three months or a city that is reasonable enough to get on a plane that you could get there within a day or at least go there, have a meeting, come back. That's typically what I look for. So we're going to remove San Diego. We're going to remove Phoenix for now. I'm not planning on being um, in any American cities yet, but if you guys are American and you're watching here, uh, let me know and maybe Maybe I'm going to have to place a trip here. Um, Canada, way too general, you guys. Don't just filter by all of Canada. That's a little bit ridiculous. I am in Calgary, so I'm going to look for Calgary specifically. Um, and I'm actually going to be in Toronto um, in, um, in a few months. So I'm going to leave Toronto in there for now, but I'm actually going to get rid of the GTA or the greater Toronto area, um, because I want to be able to, to get there within a, uh, within a 30 minutes drive. Um, so to be able to, to go in the GTA is a little bit too much. Okay. Um, you can also add different locations. You can have relationships, companies, um, as well. You have your industries, company headcount. So this is the one thing that sales navigator does that regular LinkedIn doesn't is that you can actually filter based on company. So one of the things that oftentimes people will put as part of the research or part of, you know, understanding who is my ideal client would be revenue size. Now the quickest way to be able to determine revenue is based on the number of people that are are um, located in a company. Now, this isn't a perfect, um, a, a perfect solution because oftentimes the number of people that are listed as part of the company is if the person has their job listed as that. That's how LinkedIn is kind of filtering out. Now, if the company isn't a company that has a um, has a lot of people listed on LinkedIn, um, they might they're either going to try to do a little bit of artificial intelligence and try to extrapolate that a little bit, or they're actually going to look for that. But it can be a really good, um, am I planning on going to kiss at Cal? Uh, you know what, Maria, I, I'm Mario. I'm going to try to make it out there. Definitely. Um, I've actually had a few friends who were like, you need to come to San Francisco all the way through. So, uh, so the, the quickest way of being able to determine a company's revenue size is actually based on their headcount. And what I like to be able to say is depending on the industry, the, a company will spend somewhere between 30 to 50% of their revenue, um, uh, on headcount, right? So you would take, let's say a company is 50, 50 people, right? Maybe their average salary, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, they're, they're uh, an engineering company, right? So maybe their salary is a little bit higher all the way through. Um, and so what I would typically do is I would actually just do some real quick math. So if I said, okay, you know what, I want to have companies, I, I'm looking ideally for companies that are, let's say $25 million is what I'm looking for. 
Okay. So I would, I would type in $25 million. I would probably, I would look at, okay, what would be a third of that, um, of that revenue, right? Which would be about seven and a half million dollars is probably what they're spending in headcount. Um, and then I would divide that by what I would think would be an average salary. So in this case, I'm going to say, you know what, there, because it's an engineering company, for instance, um, I'm looking at about a $75,000 salary, right? Some of this is picking numbers out of hats, you guys, but I would rather you start somewhere than try to get so specific which means that I would be ideally looking for companies of about a hundred people. If I was looking for five, um, a $25 million company. Now in this case, we're looking for um, between 50 to about seven, um, 75. So I'm probably looking at a company that might be closer to about 12 and a half million ish, right? That is going to be a different conversation. So just make sure that as you filter through this, that you're not going so wide, but you're trying to keep yourself narrowed enough all the way through. And we can, we can sort by um, titles or tags or anything else like that as well. Um, tags are really only important when we, well, we have tagged them, right? Someone to follow up with, right? We can actually use this in conjunction to a CRM. This is not to replace your CRM or customer relationship management tool. I want to make that very clear. And then you can, once you start to connect with people, you can actually either add them to a list or you can add them, um, you can start to message them directly through there. Right. So in, in this case, um, you know, I've actually, I sent, um, a Misha a message not too long ago. And I just said, Hey, I love your branding. Um, listen, I would love to hear how you're, how you're training your teams on sales skills, right? Because one of the things I noticed on his website, when I went to his website is that he didn't have anyone in business development, right? Which is a perfect fit for me because we actually train a lot of people that are looking for sales skills, not necessarily sales team. And I just go in right for what I'd like. Are you available Tuesday at 10 o'clock? Now, because I've sent him a message, he has now popped up on my, on my typical information and I'm actually going to be able to continue to, to message him all the way through, or at least be able to follow him as we go through this all the way through. Um, but you do want to make sure that you're filtering this all the, um, as much as possible. Okay. So the idea behind this, you guys, is I do want you to get really specific with the number of people that you are wanting to connect with, right? Your sales funnel, the, the irony behind a sales funnel is that a lot of people think that they need to have, um, th that it's actually bad to have a narrow barrier to entry, which is, you know, kind of part of the conversation we had when we were talking all over the weekend on what your elevator pitch was. It's like, I don't want to get too narrow. And I'm like, no, you do want to get really narrow because if you think about your average sales funnel right you're going to be coming through here and you're going to be able to say okay, okay you know what i'm going to have to have so many meetings and i'm going to have to have so many conversations and i'm going to eventually going to get to so many proposals right and this isn't about trying to capture as many people at the top but rather create this little like doorway right i want you to think of this as this tiny little door that people have to be able to fit through because if you can cause the conversation that you're like, this is specifically what I'm looking for, then you know your clients are gonna be the right ones to talk to. So what is it that you're going to be able to, uh, the, the idea behind this is I want you to start thinking to yourself about when somebody works with you, six months, to a year after they are finished working with you. You have provided them a solution. You are maybe working with them on a regular basis. You've maybe created a cadence or a relationship. If they're an ongoing relationship, perhaps you're just there for one period of time. Where will the business be or where will they be personally six months to a year after, after you have worked with them? And be very specific with this. I don't want you to say that I'm going to help you grow your business $100,000 all the way up to $10 million. <laughs> Like, I mean, that is just far too wide and far too vast of a conversation. We want to be able to get this really narrow and really specific all the way through. Have the conversation that you're like, this is specifically what I'm looking for. Then you know your clients are going to be the right ones to talk to. So what is it that you're going to be able to... Uh, the, the idea behind this is I want you to start thinking to yourself about when somebody works with you, six months to a year after they are finished working with you. You have provided them a solution. You are maybe working with them on a regular basis. You've maybe created a cadence or a relationship. If they're an ongoing relationship, perhaps you're just there for one period of time. Where will the business be or where will they be personally six months to a year after, after you have worked with them? And be very specific with this. I don't want you to say that I'm going to help you grow your business $100,000 all the way up to $10 million. <laughs> Like, I mean, that is just far too wide and far too vast of a conversation. We want to be able to get this really narrow and really specific all the way through. 
And then feel free to go in with, are you interested in this? So as another example, I told you guys I would use a lot, like I showed you a lot of examples of some of the things we're doing. One of the things that we're building in our company is we're going to be launching a web series in about a month or two months. And so we're looking for a lot of sponsorship dollars. We're talking to some really large conversations, right? So um, financial institutions, we've, we've come uh, to have some conversations with some banks. Uh, we're looking for, you know, telecom companies. We're looking for, uh, you know, other, any types of software companies that would help to, to stimulate these conversations. And literally the conversation that I would send to them is, you know, how are you, how are you built or, you know, what is your interest? What is your interest? in having influence or marketing help to establish your conversation, right? Or help to establish your brand, right? You know, and I've even, I've even gone as far as saying like, you know, uh, what is your interest in sponsoring a project that would actually have long form video content associated with your brand? I am very specific. I am not going in super vague here, you guys. I want people to either say, yes, I'm interested, let's have a conversation, or no, I'm not. I'm not here to dance around this, right? I'm here to say, this is exactly what I have to offer. Now, in this case, it is very product specific, um, product specific. But in other cases, I may go out and I have, I'll have a different conversation along the lines of like, you know, what is your interest in, in collaborating for video content all the way through. But by being that specific, your client is ultimately going to ask themselves is how can you do something like that for me, right? How could we, how could we collaborate in influencer? How could we um, put together a solution that is going to help me with my legacy? I have no idea what, you know, what my 90 day plan is, right? You know, what have you done for other companies in the past? Thank you, Mario. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, rather than having people say, um, you know, does that, does this even apply to me? And most of the case, because they're not sure if it applies to them, they're actually going to say no. They're going to say no right off the get go versus getting them specifically interested all the way through. So part of your other thing is that you're going to have to assume other things about your ideal criteria. So as we, as you, we saw in LinkedIn, we were able to narrow some things all the way through, but some of the things that I'm going to have to go through. So in the case of um, Brianna, who we, we went and connected with, right? I have to kind of go through here and understand what her goals and aspirations are for her business and what her fears are. Now I talked a little bit about this because I said, well, obviously she's a very, you know, driven person. She's a top 30 under 30 right? I mean, you know, it's, it's a process to apply for those things and to be able to be recognized for that and to be able to grow your business in a way that is recognized from the outside. So there is a lot of goals and aspirations for her, but maybe some of her fears is that she's like a one hit wonder. Maybe some of her fears is that she's able to create a business for herself, but how does she go ahead and scale this? And what would scaling in a non-sustainable way look like to her, feel like to her? which would then ultimately give us like an opportunity to be able to have that deeper conversation, right? So go ahead and ask yourself, if I was, you know, Brianna, or I was, let's say, you know, I'm going to call in some other people's like Rochelle's or Faye or Sandra or Darcy all the way through here, what would be some of the things that I would be scared of? And don't feel like you need to just either hint around this or not directly address it. It actually is valuable to say like, you know what, um, what are like, you know, and ask her, right? Like Brianna, what are your fears about scaling your business? Like hiring more people um, when you don't know if you're going to have work coming in or not, right? Like let's have an authentic conversation all the way through there. I put this in bold because this is really touching on much more of the empathetic and emotional intelligence side of the sales conversation. This is something that you will have to practice all the way through. In our program, we specifically talk about this. We, we draw this out throughout the entire program. But whatever you're doing in your sales, ask yourself, stand in your client's shoes and ask yourself, where am I getting this? Now, the other things I said you're going to have to also assume are things like the values, right? Are the values aligned? In Brianna's case that we saw, we saw that she like she had a whole section towards like charitable giving and everything. Like, like that is a big heart center for her, right? She's a very purpose-driven person. And if I can align my conversation about maybe perhaps how we, how I have also, you know, connected with some of the groups that she also supports, or maybe a similar group all the way through there, we could easily start a conversation. Some of the other things that I might have to think about are going to be challenges or pain points, right? Maybe what, what would be her role in a decision-making criteria um, all the way through. 
sorry guys. Um, so you're going to, you're going to, okay, you guys, like this is a non-negotiable. If you are determined for creating a fantastic company in 2020, your goal is to create a list of 100 clients. Many of you have heard me say this before, and I hope right now, if you've heard me say this before, this is like the brick in the head moment that you're having. You're like, oh, okay, Kim, you've said it, you've said it that you've said it. I haven't done it. It's on my to-do list. And you know, you guys, now there is no more time, right? You must create this list of 100. What you saw when I was going through LinkedIn and sales navigator is part of this is about creating those ongoing relationships, creating those ongoing conversations all the way through. And we have to know, um, one of the things that you, you need to know is that 80% of your sales will happen after the fifth touch point. 80% of people will connect with you or agree to meet with you after you've connected with them five times. Um, I know this from my own personal experience. I've had people like that will reach out to me, reach out to me, reach out to me. And then all of a sudden they'll just change their game. And it's almost like, you know what it feels like? It feels like they've given, they given up, right? Or they're like, I have literally nothing to lose. So I'm going to stop trying so hard. Those are the conversations that often get the most excitement because you're just like, I'm just going to throw out this one question. I'm going to just throw out this one request all the way through. I want you to embrace this. It's not that you're they're not trying or that they don't care. It's that how do you ask only one question? Don't give people your whole history or your rundown on everything you are. Be like, what are your plans on doing this? Right? What, what are, what do you want to achieve in 2020? right? Um, how many of your deals are you responding to an RFP? And how frustrating is that to have to hurry up and wait for these things to come out? Like create this conversation, but be genuinely interested in them. And as you start to create this, you're going to hand select them and go ahead and start creating engagement. Start to embrace this, start to go out there and, and have these conversations all the way through. Okay, so you got a chance to see me do some cold outreach on social, right? Direct message or LinkedIn, Facebook, other things. Um, so one of the things I did say was that, you know, I actually did reach out. Um, we're actually having meeting number four with this financial institution. Yay, right? We, we celebrate meetings because meetings are really good, but we, we don't really celebrate until a, a contract is signed, ink is on paper, money has been transacted. Then we really, then we pop open the bubbly, okay? But the, when I tell people about the conversations, they're like, how did you get that? And I said, literally this, literally the cold outreach on social. I had nothing to lose. And I just decided, you know what? I'm just going to throw out a, bit, a bunch of Hail Marys, right? What is your interest in this, right? Um, you know, how are you, how are you currently implementing this, right? You know, when was the last time you did something like this? Like, like create a really good question. If you want more tips on that, um, go check out my, my recent LinkedIn post. I had like the, the top five, um, the top five ways that you can create a brand new elevator pitch. Go take a look at that. Uh, but we'll have another webinar on something else along that. But it can be a similar as a cold outreach, but remember your intention with uh, usually the cold outreach on social is not to necessarily get the phone meeting right away, uh, but maybe to create a conversation and then to ask for the phone meeting. Um, when, when you guys saw, I showed you Amisha's me message, I just went in for the meeting, right? I was just like, you know what? Um, it's not that I don't care. It's that I want him to know that I am interested in having a conversation. Now he doesn't necessarily have to respond, but he is going to start to be like, probably pay attention a little bit more towards my content and be like, how do we start to implement something all the way through this? Now be clear though, you guys, you're going to get a two to 3% um, reply rate response rate. I, I wish I could give you like the perfect thing to say to everyone, the per like the perfect thing to say to every single person to get the meeting every single time. Unfortunately, it doesn't exist. So this is a pure numbers game, right? You're going to reach out to about 50 people before one person says yes, right? But at least you might be able to connect with them. You might be able to have some more conversations. Part of the reason why I want you to have that list of 100 is because if, if you're getting a two to 3% response rate every single time, you're going to start to see that get better because if it takes five touch points for someone to want to respond back to you, you're going to consistently go back to those same people over and over. We're creating relationships. You have understood who your clients are. You've said, I want that person in my network. I want to work with that person. We're going to do that. 
Now, you can also do social media targeting, but use the right platforms. So we kind of, we talked a little bit about Facebook. I, I showed you some ideas behind Facebook. Facebook's just not, this is not my thing, right? Um, you know, for, for a lot of variety of things, but really we're, I'm wanting to, a lot of the stuff I do is about creating value and having higher level conversations. And I find Facebook in general, to be much more of a business to consumer or a direct purchase type of thing. If I was trying to push my book, Facebook would be a perfect thing. When I'm trying to, to push webinars and trying to push uh, conversation, uh, sorry, um, uh, sales, uh, sales training, LinkedIn is much more valuable for me all the way through. Now, um, LinkedIn is great for B2B. It's, it's valuable. Um, Twitter can be used for brand awareness. And I, I don't even have like, I mean, you could even talk about some of the other socials all the way. Um, yeah, thank you, Blaine, right? <laughs> Not a problem. But you want to create um, conversation and urgency all the way through. Now, be careful when it comes to email, you guys, because a lot of people will, will do their outreaches through emails because it will often seem like it's less invasive. Now, I could have chosen to go ahead and respond to Brianna um, through email. I could have just go, gone and dropped her um, um, an email message directly, and I could have done that, and maybe I will at some point. Um, uh, Mary, I'll get to your question in a second here. Um, but at this point in time, it doesn't necessarily make sense for me, right? Just because I'm trying to understand a little bit more about her. My intention with sending a message on LinkedIn is that I want somebody to receive the message and then immediately go to my LinkedIn profile and take a look at my content. See that I'm somebody worth paying attention to, worth connecting to. The other thing is the moment they connect with me, they are, they start to follow my feed. I am a regular LinkedIn um, poster, right? But regardless whether that is, now I have another opportunity to connect with them all the way through, okay? Okay, but if you do send an email, you guys, it's your email subject line that matters, right? Like full stop, okay? Um, I think it's like 38% of emails are, on, are open purely based on subject line and nothing else. So I want you to think of this like the, the old proverb, right? If a tree falls in the woods and there's no one to hear it, does it make a sound? If your email is so amazing and so compelling, but your, your subject line sucks so bad, does it even matter how amazing your email is? So many people will spend so much time in the email body and like spend no time thinking about the subject line. I want you to change that around. I want you to start to spend more time thinking about the subject line than you do for the email body. So this is really around get some benefit without pain or this increase 83% of employees motivation. Now this, like the, the idea of this is that it is, it, it stimulates curiosity. It's like, well, what is this? Like, what is that? Like I need to open it in order to find out what that would be. Um, X, Y, Z um, company clients are waiting for you, or, you know, I have a hot lead for you or something else like that. Like people, you know, because the reason why emails like I have a hot lead for you or your comp your clients are waiting for you or something else like that um, will, will actually increase open rate is because the same way as I talked about originally, how when we have conversations about helping someone gain money, gain um, investors, gain profitability and everything, this falls within that same what realm, is that if I felt like I had a client waiting for me, I'm going to open that money because it feels like it's, it's much more of a sure thing, or at least it's like there's a promise of profitability or revenue just on the other side. Now, surprisingly, um, simple subject lines such as hey, or even strategically putting no subject line, but be careful with this because now no subject lines are starting to be spam filtered, but hey has a huge surprise open rate. Um, Barack Obama used the subject line hey back when I think he was campaigning in his 2008 election, and he had something like a ridiculous like 83% open rate. Like it was um, unbelievably huge. Use it within strategy um, all the way through. Now, now, Mario has a question here and he says that, you know, what do you recommend for email follow-up, constant, um, constant contact or MailChimp or anything else with this? So, uh, Mary, I want, I want to be very cautious here um, because it depends on who you're contacting. Now, I, I believe you said that you're in San Francisco, which is fantastic. Your, um, your email laws are going to be a little bit different than either in uh, Europe, which falls under JDPR, um, or in Canada, which um, falls under CASEL. 
Um, you have to be cautious about not adding anyone to a database unless they have given you explicit permission to do so um, because you could actually get fined or you could actually have your entire account shut down. Um, but that being said, uh, it is, you know, it is important to be able to, to have that, that follow up all the way through. Now, uh, I use HubSpot. I'm a big HubSpot believer. Um, and we actually follow, uh, because HubSpot actually manages both our email marketing as well as all of our social media and our website and everything else with this, I get some really crazy insights into you guys. Like you would probably be scared <laughs> like what I, know, what I know about you. Um, but it's actually a good thing because when people come back to my website and things like that, that can actually be a, um, it can be a, a very specific thing. Um, so, you know, if you, but if you're sending an email, um, if you're sending a direct email to somebody for a specific business person purpose, and it's only sent to that person. So you're using your, your email server, such as Gmail, um, such as Outlook or anything else like that. Um, that will usually fall outside of the, any of those other realms. Um, but the other thing is, is to remember is that until you're able to get that permission, then, then you can add them into your database. So, so be a little bit careful with that. Oh, here you guys go. I said 38%. It's actually 35%. So 35% of um, recipients will open an email based on subject line and nothing else. Okay. So a third, a third, you guys, right? Like, and I want you to even start like, you know, pay attention to the emails that you get, which ones are open. Like when you get a lot of emails, which ones do you open? Which ones don't write down those subject lines. What made you excited to open those emails all the way through? Okay. So calling for meetings, you guys, is still the best way, um, you know, it, especially when you start to create those, those conversations all the way through. Um, in the case of the financial institution, right? I mean, I sent, it, it went from, you know, cold outreach on social saying like, hey, is this something that did interest you? They said, send us some information. Um, the information that I sent them, it wasn't that I sent them information. I said like, this is the, like, it was literally like, I think two lines. It was like, this is the project that I'm working on. Can we, can we meet for a 10 minute phone call? right? Like I can only have these, these phone calls, um, and create that value when I'm actually in, in conversation. Now, remember whenever someone says, send me some information, don't send them information, you guys, right? How do you go ahead and give somebody the perfect thing that they need to see if you know nothing about them? My husband and I were having a, um, an argument about this on the weekend because I said, you know, your elevator pitch should be, should be a, a question. It should be, you know, generating interest into the other person. And he goes, well, how can somebody generate interest in you if you don't know, if they know nothing about you? And I said, well, how would somebody be able to be interested in them if you know nothing about them? Right. And so this became like kind of a very circular thing. But the idea behind this, you guys, at the end of the day, regardless, you cannot help somebody out until you know something about them. So be happy to send them some information. I'm happy to, um, can we get on a call and just so I can understand a little bit more about what you're looking for or what made you interested about this, right? And make sure that this is a perfect fit. If the person says no, you guys, it doesn't matter what information that you would have sent, they would have still said no. If they say yes, bing, 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 you're much better off, right? Versus hoping that I'm gonna throw some information out there and hope it's gonna stick it doesn't, right? Get on the phone call. Okay. Your prospects aren't typically seeking your solutions, but start the relationship somewhere. Okay. Um, but you guys, the intention of the phone call is just to get more information. It is to get a meeting. It is to understand more about the client and the prospect all the way through. Okay. So we went through LinkedIn. I showed you guys how much of a gold mine it is. You guys use it embrace it. Like, you know, follow people that you want to follow with. And if you are going to invest in sales navigator, right, go ahead and like really start like, you know, creating, harvesting your lists and everything all the way through there all the way through. But your, your biggest thing is to research before the call. So one of the things that we didn't cover was specifically if you're going after bigger accounts, publicly traded organizations where they might have letters to shareholders or management discussion and analysis. So in the case of the financial institution that I'm working with, I went ahead and I read their, their management discussion and analysis. So it's, it's typically about a two to three page um, document that um, prefaces the, the annual report of a company. And for most people, the annual report is just a bunch of jargon. Um, you know, it's very boring read, but the management discussion and analysis gives you an insight into what the company's goals are for the future. And within there, I saw that um, in this, in this particular financial institution, one of their goals was to actually increase the number of services that their clients wanted to spend. Now I can't personally help them 
increase the number of services. But the solution that I might have, which would be either, well, how do we use, you know, some of the social media in order to be able to stimulate a natural conversation about this? We did it, we were able to have a conversation. And then I was able to craft one of the questions I said, it's like, what is that magic number for you? What is the number of services that you need to have every, um, every banking client use? And then all of a sudden we were having a conversation around that versus just saying, well, I saw that you were trying to increase your services. So that's really good. And then, you know, trying to, to apply that, take the information that you can get from them ask it a question back to them, right? Find out, clarify this, find out more about them. How can you use this even further all the way through? So in the case of Mark Fields and CEO, some of you guys have seen this, right? But I mean, this is about reading between the lines as well, right? Most of the time, the management discussion analysis will come across as very good and warm, right? But Mark is like, I mean, you know, the reading between the lines says Mark is, Mark is saying like, you know, the world is changing, right? We're looking at shared vehicles and everything. When you read these types of documents, what is not being said? So no matter what, make sure that you guys are talking about what is in it for the other person. If you're standing in the other person's shoes, what are they interested in and how will you help them get there? This doesn't mean that you have to go from, from point A to point B really fast, but just get to the point where you're starting the conversation. Somebody who's willing to start a conversation with you is more likely to have another conversation with you. Don't feel like you need to go from, here's what I offer to, are you willing to buy? Rather, he, who, like, let me tell, tell me a little bit more about yourself and ask more questions and start to ask yourself, how does this fit in all the way through? And if you're stuck, be creative, you guys. Go to those friends of friends, find those other connections. But no matter what, we end every single classroom with this, is what are you going to do today? that is going to have a significant impact on your business. Like, like I went really behind the scenes. This is like probably the most behind the scenes um, and, you know, actual information that a webinar that I've ever done. Did you like